Hello folks, you know when I decided to make this video on small hexacopters, uh, it, it really was an excuse to fly my big aero sky. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know when they decided to start calling hexacopters uh, drones or quadcopters drones, but in my day in the military, our drones looked like the Reaper and my, and my Raven and stuff, but uh, never anything like this. So you know, I buy this little tiny thing and what's it say on it? It says it's a drone. So. Let's take a look at the drones, the tiny ones, and I'm going to show you the one that got away. And uh, I'm kind of bummed about that, but... Both of these hexacopters are from JJRC. They make pretty good stuff. This one does not have the uh, pop guards on it where this one does. And uh, this looks a little bit bigger, but they look like they're about the same size. Well, first, let's take a look at the smallest hexacopter I've ever seen. It's called the H-18. You know, I've given up trying to figure out what the number sizes mean, but it's only two and three quarters inch shaft to shaft. And uh, both the H-20 and the H-18 are the same size, but with the different bodies and blade guards, they look different. Next, let's look at the H2O. It's just a beautiful color, but it's just like the H18 transmitter. It has a big awkward thumb knob on the left uh, transmitter stick, which is no good for us stick pinchers who like to pinch uh, their sticks, you know, in the, in the middle. So my easy fix was just to simply place neoprene hose over the knob stick once the, uh, these knob things are pulled off. It works great, and no more ceiling plants. I'd like to show it to you here, but uh, that one got away, as you're going to see. <laughs> well, that's pretty. Flew right out of range. Well, next, let's take a look at the Series X machine. Uh, this one is my favorite of the three. It has a very unique transmitter with logically placed trims and functions. It also has a bigger battery, which seems standard in a lot of my RC machines. So I also got one of these multi-chargers, complete with five batteries that could be charged all at once on one USB port or supply. Now this is cool and it was really cheap, a five pack. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at this. Well, that's a pretty interesting transmitter. When you turn it on, uh, it turns on to low, a little more, medium, and high. I've never seen anything like that. We've got uh, functions with rudder and elevator here, uh, which do 
things and then you've got your left and right trim buttons down here which are nice and big you can get your thumb on it I don't like this knob I'm gonna put a knob there but then on top we've got four more buttons that do other things so let's uh, put this all together and see what happens Can't tell the front. Very hard to tell the front. Can't really tell where the front is. Oh, that's scary. Oh. Okay, lastly, I'm going to fly my Aerosky 550, sometimes referred to as the flame wheel. You know, this early machine has no gyro stabilization and is much harder to fly, but it's pretty cool. Well, thanks a lot for watching, folks. I really appreciate it. You know, you never know what's going to come from Mr. Herbert Science Class, so please stay tuned.